Hi, Lester, Wishu Engineer. You may have noticed that the uh, Wishu Engineer channel has been updated with an awesome new logo, title and color scheme. We're intending to bring out a range of branded t-shirts and hoodies. For those of you who'd like to support the projects that we are involved in at the Wishu Engineer channel and who would also like to own some cool merchandise. I know I'm going to get some. I'll keep you posted on this in future videos if you're interested. Well enough about that shameless plug. Crane strikes. The crane has been uh, part of many animal systems of Kung Fu for a very very long time um, and even uh, even forms a part of most uh, most traditional Tai Chi systems as well in, in conjunction with snakes. So crane and snake form a part of most traditional Tai Chi systems. Crane often involves fast snappy strikes with the tips of the fingers of either hand. A hand formation which is often called the crane beak. Because of the delicate nature of the fingertips it's hard to bridge very high impact forces through them when striking. It's far easier to generate high impact forces uh, through punches, elbow strikes and various kicks. So why would one want to strike with the fingertips then? Well perhaps for one of the following reasons. First of all range. Fingertip strikes extend the striking range considerably. In my case up to about 10 centimeters. May not seem like much but uh, within the context of a self-defense situation or an intense fight it does make a difference. Speed. The whip-like action used to produce these kinds of strikes uh, allows for some very fast strikes that don't require uh, much by the way of wind-up or any at all. In addition there's precision because um, pinpoint striking is actually achievable using these kinds of strikes since the striking surface is more refined and controlled. And lastly, pressure. Due to the small surface area of the fingertips, the pressure that can be exerted by a fingertip strike can be quite high. In this video, I decided to investigate the amount of pressure produced by a crane beak strike. I do not have access, unfortunately, uh, I don't have access yet, I should say, unfortunately, to any kind of equipment that can measure pressure directly, striking pressure directly. So I had to measure impact force um, with a load cell, measure the impact area of my fingertips, and work the pressure out from these two variables. As a bit of fun, here's a demonstration of a crane beak strike on a 2mm thick melamine plate. I performed some crane beak strikes on the load cell and this is what the tests looked like. The maximum force that I produced in this test was 286 newtons which is approximately 64.29 pounds of force. It took 6 milliseconds to reach the maximum value before the peak started turning. I then applied some red paint to my fingertips and performed a crane beak strike on a piece of white paper to mark the typical crane beak strike impact area so that I could measure it.
The impact area made up of a tight grouping of five rough circles which correspond to my fingertips represented an area of approximately 218 square millimeters. After conversion this is approximately 0 0.338 square inches in area. So putting these numbers together we can calculate that the pressure exerted by my fingertips in that strike was roughly 190 psi pounds per square inch or 1.3 megapascals of pressure. As a comparison a good punch may achieve 4,000 newtons of force, impact force, or approximately 900 pounds. The impact area of my fist is approximately 7 square inches, making the pressure in that punch approximately 128 psi, a full 60 psi lower than the crane beak strike and only 882 kilopascals in terms of pressure. So what can 190 PSI impact do to an opponent? Well, I couldn't find any studies that were of direct significance in this case, but there were a few that were of some interest. On page 67 of the Biomechanics of Impact Injury by Albert King, figure 2.33 shows a graph of tolerance of the skull to fracture in terms of acceleration and pulse duration which also shows temporal pressure or intracranial pressure in PSI. The graph only showed values of temporal pressure that scaled up to 90 PSI for up to 5 milliseconds. While temporal pressure is not what I was measuring, since I was measuring actual impact PSI and not intracranial pressure, it is still interesting to note these values. I'm still looking through a few scientific papers and textbooks and I'll make a follow-up video to this if I uncover anything more noteworthy. In addition, if you know of some topical research that might allow a good uh, comparison in terms of pressure and time duration of those impacts, let me know in the comments section below. So to sum it up, crane beak strikes definitely allow a martial artist to produce impact pressures that are very high in comparison to other strikes. This in combination with the other advantages such as speed, range and, and precision may make the crane beak strike very applicable in certain circumstances. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Cheers.